Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about line of reasoning. How do we identify it? How does it relate to our understanding of claims, evidence, and reasoning in an argument? And how does it help us move forward with success in AP seminar? Uh, before we can talk about line of reasoning, we need to make sure that we understand the concepts of the parts of an argument. Uh, as we've looked at in previous videos, every good argument has claims. Those claims are supported by evidence, and reasoning provides the rationale for how that evidence supports the argument. Today we're going to look at how those come together uh, if we take multiple claims to create a line of reasoning. Uh, the reason we want to look at this is... Oh, crap. Hello, everybody. Today we're going to take a look at line of reasoning. Now, this video builds on our previous understanding of the parts of an argument, which we covered in a previous lesson. Uh, but just as a refresher, the parts of an argument start with a claim. Uh, a claim is not just a statement of a fact, like the sun is coming up, uh, but it is a statement of an argument, like the Rams are the best football team in the NFL. We then need to take a claim and support it with evidence uh, for example, we could list the margin of scoring that the Rams have had over both the Cardinals and the Raiders this year uh, to support our argument. And then we would need reasoning to explain that having a greater margin of error over uh, the teams they had beat indicates that offensively and defensively, the Rams are a superior team. So we have claims, evidence, and reasoning. Now, today, we're going to take a look at how multiple claims can be tied together to produce a line of reasoning. Just to reiterate though, a claim is one statement uh, that has evidence and reasoning, but a line of reasoning needs to have multiple claims. So if we're presented with a resource, what we need to be able to do is to identify the multiple claims that might be in that particular piece. Now, depending on what we're reading, uh, that could be two, three, or four claims, or it might be seven or eight. But for the purposes of how this is going to help us in AP Seminar, uh, we're going to operate on the assumption that we need to identify at least three connected claims in order to evaluate a line of reasoning. Um, if you're unable to identify more than one claim, then there is no line of reasoning. There is simply one claim. And the reason we want to know this is in the end of course exam, we're going to be asked to explain the author's line of reasoning by identifying the claims used to build the argument. Because the language from the end of course exam uses claims, which is multiple, we know that we have to find more than one. Uh, chances are there will be at least three. Now it's possible there could be four or five, but we also know that on the end of course exam, we're going to be timed in what we need to do. So in terms of demonstrating the skills, really all we need to be able to do is say that we have found at least three claims and then we can take a look at the connections amongst them. What is a connection? Well, a strong line of reasoning will have clear connections between the claims made in the argument. Uh, the connections can sometimes be built by the references to the evidence being used, but at other times it might just be obvious because they are all centered around the same subject. And going back to the language of the end of course exam, it asks us to identify those claims and the connections between them. If we want to score well on the end of course exam, we need to identify and discuss the connections. Now that might be that we say there's a very strong or obvious connection, or we can talk about a flawed connection if the claims, evidence, and reasoning seem somewhat unrelated or illogical. Uh, here's an example that we could start with. Uh, the argument is that high school start times should be moved to later in the day. Uh, we're going to look at claims related to academics, health, and safety. Claim number one is that a later start time improves academic performance. The evidence might be students who start later have improved scores on standardized math tests. Our second claim might be a later start time allows for a healthy amount of sleep. Well, the evidence would be that high school students have different circadian rhythms which prevent sleep prior to 11 p.m. 
Later start times allow for a healthy amount of sleep. And then our third claim would be later start times reduce car accidents by students. And the evidence would be a change in start times reduced car accidents by 70% in the state of Montana. If we look at all three of these claims, have I identified multiple separate claims? Yes, I have three very distinct claims that deal with three very distinct parts of the issue, academics, health, and safety. So I have identified those claims. I have also discussed the evidence that supports those claims. But remember, I have to be able to find the connections. There needs to be a clear connection between the claims and the evidence. If there is not a clear connection, you can also point that out. Sometimes in the end of course exam and in some of the works we look at, there might be flawed lines of reasoning. And to demonstrate our understanding, it's actually a higher order thinking skill to not just assume that it's always done well because it's been published by somebody uh, in a journalistic source or an academic journal, but being able to identify the flaws in a line of reasoning can actually help us because it's indicating a higher level of understanding. Now, if we look back to the example I gave you, when we look at safety, academic performance, and health, even though we didn't clearly discuss specific ways in which the evidence was connected, they are all related to the relationship between start times and student health. So if I were writing about this or discussing the line of reasoning, being able to point out the obvious connection between these three things I would indicate that I understood the line of reasoning and I was capable of evaluating. If we were to remove one of these, let's say we took out the issue of safety about car accidents and our third claim was that start times uh, make teachers crankier. Well, that's not necessarily clearly related to the other two parts of the line of reasoning. While it might be a counterclaim, and I might want to talk about that and use that language, it doesn't necessarily mean that this was a thorough and well-constructed line of reasoning. It would be what we would call a flawed line of reasoning. If you have any further questions, feel free to uh, message me. And now it's time to move forward with a little practice. Today we're going to take a look at a sample from a TED Talk about a line of reasoning. I want you to look for multiple claims, identify the evidence, and then with your table partners I want you to discuss what are the clear and obvious connections between claims and evidence in this particular piece?